Hey everybody, happy Sunday. It's Q&A time. So also a new mic, let me know how it is. I must have a wasteland of different microphones. Anyway, thank you all for coming. And uh, everything hopefully is working. Shout at me if it's not. I'm watching uh, all the messages. So this is a big Q&A. All the top questions from the week, what people are concerned about. A lot of it has to do with the Bitcoin ETF and manipulation, how OTC works, but also a lot of questions around proxies, microstrategy, miners. Are they dead now that the ETF is here? Also, is there a faster horse than Tesla versus Bitcoin? Which one wins? And we'll talk about the Jupiter airdrop. A quick update. Is it legit or is it not? And how you can make a lot of money leveraging real estate. So let's uh, talk about that and everything else. Thank you all for coming and thank you to the mods in the chat as well. And I assume everything's right or else the mods will text me if it's not. So let's jump in. And uh, now this is financial advice, just a guy on the internet. And all the questions come from Patreon and a shout out to everybody on Patreon as well. It's my little Patreon mug. Thank you to the Patreon team who gave that to me. Anyway, let's go. Let's talk about the first one. A lot of these questions blend together, so there'll be multiple parts. So let's take it step by step. First of all, can you please explain how ETF prices will increase if Bitcoin goes up? How does the price go up if these companies buy OTC? Or is the liquidity pool so small that they would have to buy in the public as well? And would you recommend holding some shares in an ETF if you're not a whole coiner? So Fat Pat and JX4020, Thank you for the question. Let's break it down. First of all, I'm going to try to simplify kind of how the OTC works and kind of what you alluded to as well at the very end of that. One, OTC transactions are there to stabilize the Bitcoin price. And, you know, there was, a, despite the launch of $4.3 billion in ETF volume, Bitcoin's price actually went down, which is astounding. And this is due to Coinbase's use of over-the-counter, which is OTC transactions for handling large Bitcoin trades. Also, uh, OTC is for private and tailored trading. They are private deals between two parties, often used for high-volume transactions that are not publicly listed in exchanges. So you don't really know what's going on. It allows for discrete and tailored trading experiences, as well as Coinbase's OTC approach to institutional clients as a major crypto exchange, Coinbase uses these to handle the ETF behind the scenes and the strategic move during the ETF launch, Coinbase's decision to prioritize OTC transfers during the ETF launch was strategic and aligning again with the goal to provide personalized services to institutional clients and stabilize market dynamics. Now, what's interesting about this is it's actually an opportunity for retail because you know things are happening behind the scenes. But also when you have a plan and you have a sniping target, you should fulfill that too. In fact, as I talk right now, Bitcoin is at 42,300. So it is weak. It is taking a dip. Maybe one of these ETFs wants to buy this dip right now. Now the maturity as well of cryptocurrency, uh, this will happen over time. It's so brand new. There's a lot of moving parts. Things are floating around. Uh, but once things stabilize, it'll become a lot more easy for it to operate. Now, the most important thing is at the very end here, you see that when these companies buy OTC, they are purchasing large amounts of crypto directly from sellers rather than public exchanges. However, if the liquidity pool gets drained, they have to go to the market as well and buy from you. That day is coming. It's not here yet because we still have that whole kerfuffle with Grayscale, with their egregious fees, and they are, people are redeeming their GBTC, and all of the, that Bitcoin is coming on the market and somehow falling into the hands of other players at a lower price, but don't worry. And then another answer to your other question, would it be worthwhile using an ETF as an on-ramp? And the answer is yes, there are many ways to becoming a whole coiner. And of course, holding some shares in an ETF is a good way to gain exposure to that cryptocurrency without having to own it outright. But of course, I always say pure form first. So go for it and time your buys. We're seeing massive fluctuations in the ETF prices. I analyzed them on Friday, again yesterday, and I also talked about some other items as well. So watch this space carefully. It's new. A lot of money is coming in. This thing is very scarce. So just leverage you know these opportunities if we see a sub forty two thousand dollar bitcoin that's when i stack that's the price that i always like to stack even back in 2021 so 
<laughs> and remember, when you are grabbing your Bitcoin and you're taking it from the exchange, you are denying the OTC players that have their favorite partners like BlackRock and others work for yourself. Uh, pure form always when possible. If not, there's no harm buying an ETF too. But again, time your buys. So next question, which is kind of related, next two-part question is from Kil Kilua Zoldik. Now we got the ETF approval. Uh, will all the ETF issuers be reporting to the SEC how much Bitcoin they are holding, corresponding to their share ish issuance, just like quarterly results? And how does the SEC make sure they are not issuing shares without actual backing up bit with Bitcoin? Also from Akates, there's such a huge range of prices with the ETFs. With GBTC, we knew if it was discount or not. Um, how can the ETFs be analyzed to see if one is more expensive relative to the others? Ignoring the known fees, thinking arbitrage opportunities here. So you're speaking my language. And we've actually been talking about that, doing that internally since Thursday. And we're looking at a way of doing it. The problem we have is there's such a delay in reporting. So, for example, BlackRock was taking in money on Thursday. And they're taking in money on Friday. And they didn't actually buy till Saturday morning or late Friday night. So <laughs> there's a massive delay. And in the meantime, Bitcoin went from 49,000 all the way to about 41,650 bucks. And that's a big, big swing. So let's talk about how Wall Street works. And, you know, people say, oh, well, the fees are so small. How do they even make money? Don't worry. Wall Street make money. They always do. Uh, so first of all, uh, but getting back to the original question, the the SEC does have a set of rules and regulations in place to ensure the transparency and accuracy of the information provided by the ETF issuers. And remember, these ETF issuers wouldn't want to be caught playing a game or else the investors would lose trust in their product. In addition, uh, some of the ETFs are using NASDAQ to verify the actual amount of Bitcoin. And of course, you've got other players like Coinbase in the mix too. And then the ETF issuers are required to form uh, report stuff, you see it on their websites, and they have daily reporting of what's called T plus 1 plus T plus 2 holdings, which I covered again in yesterday's video. I won't do that again here today. And of course, the SEC does regular examinations. So the beauty of this, as we discovered this morning, everything is transparent. You should soon will be able to track, you know, which wallets are moving where, how much is being acquired on a daily basis, be able to track volume, be able to create ratios off of volume as to how much is actually scalped versus how much is actually money flow in to buy and hold the asset. And then we'll be able to determine exactly how much is leaving the exchanges, leaving the OTC pools and being locked away. So either way, just uh, between it, but we'll see. We do have another ARB cloud product, which is designed for ARB identification between MicroStrategy and Bitcoin, but we'll see if we can do one as well for the ETFs. But we wouldn't be the only ones doing it too, because I know big hedge funds are focusing very much on this as well. Not for MicroStrategy and Bitcoin, but on scalping the ETF deltas, which I also covered on, I think on Thursday or Friday's video as well. So they're pretty plain to see. In addition, this is from Sergeant X. Since price volatility is 24 times 7 times 366 because of the leap year via sexes and dexes, how will this impact investors in impending Bitcoin ETFs or non-Bitcoin ETFs in the future? Since the traditional markets aren't open on weekends and holidays, wouldn't that be ripe for price manipulation, posing risk for ETF investors? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and I, was, I always uh, joke around, I said, you know, when we grow up, we'll be able to tell our grandchildren of, of the days when the stock markets were only open 19% of the actual time in the world is kind of bonkers compared to crypto, which is 24-7. And that is a huge problem. So how do the market makers, of course, make massive money on this? Well, there's a couple of things. One, the crypto sustains substantial fluctuations and price manipulation is definitely there. For example, BlackRock buying Bitcoin two days later after getting the money. Also, you got the 24-7 nature of DEXs means opportunity for non-ETF customers, which I also believe firmly everything will move to DEXs. That's why I'm heavily invested in DEXs, because I think they are the future. Of course, ones that trade in real time and have full transparency is very important. Also, ETF buyers are at the mercy of the ETFs when you're trying to place an order. Okay. People were buying the ETF when Bitcoin was at 49K. The price was, say, I don't know, 25 bucks or $43, depending on the ETF you look at. 
and they are fulfilling their buying the Bitcoin two days later when the price is a lot lower. There's definitely something funky going on here. I can't put my finger on it, but at the end of the day, it'll all, all wash out over time. So you are at the mercy of these ETFs and there will be massive pricing discrepancies between the ETFs, net asset value and Bitcoin price, because it takes so long for them to convert your cash into Bitcoin. And that is crazy. That shouldn't, in this day and age, it's bewildering to me why it still exists, but that's just the world we live in. And it's good for the whole space as well. Now, next question related to ETFs from S22. And I promise the ETF stuff will be over soon. What are I strategies to tackle Bitcoin ETFs as you already have minor stocks, micro strategy and pure form? So let's talk about this. Uh, first of all, allocations always, always, always matter. And I always say never have more than 10% of your Bitcoin bag in miners because they're very volatile as a cutthroat business. But also, they can be very explosive, but that can cut both ways, as we saw last week. I'll talk more about that as well. MicroStrategy, I like it as it's easy to arb and hedge, which you can find arbitrage prices right now. You could argue MicroStrategy is very oversold, but we have this perfect storm of Michael Seller, Saylor selling into the teeth of the ETF launch. And of course, that drives kind of proxies down like miners and MicroStrategy. So it's a tough time, but remember as well, well, micro, while Bitcoin went up 150% in 2023, MicroStrategy went up 360%. So we're still way ahead of the game. So everybody, remember, zoom out, understand the perspective and understand what this is as well. And in terms of uh, the actual MicroStrategy miners, they're highly optionable. So it benefits me as I like to play options, not necessarily buy spot and hold. And also I would not be a candidate to buy an ETF. I'd rather control my own destiny wherever possible or heavily play proxies. Now, this is also related. Every single question so far has been related and I'm taking you down this journey, so I hope everybody's tracking with me. Because the questions are tricky, no doubt about that. This is from Anson. Would it be possible that MicroStrategy and Tesla sell their Bitcoin to buy ETF to avoid any self-custody mistakes now that fees are so low? And would it still be worth it to own MicroStrategy since most shareholders don't do any juju? So I think you mean what I call financial jujitsu, and that's one of the things that MicroStrategy can do. They don't have fees, they can borrow, they can issue stock, etc., and they can buy Bitcoin and then force other people to buy the stock, which raises the stock, and that's why it clearly outperforms the actual Bitcoin performance. But there's a couple of things here. One is would Tesla and, My oh, and MicroStrategy, would they sell their Bitcoin? And the answer is no, because no fees is better than low fees. They don't want to look like they're beholden to Wall Street. Also, there's still counterparty risk. Bitcoin ETFs aren't exactly safe. And uh, Musk and Saylor and their teams know exactly what they're doing. So again, self-custody is not trivial, but it's also not that hard, in, in fairness. Now, looking at the advantage of Bitcoin versus MicroStrategy versus an ETF. Let's try to break it down. And this was a beautiful chart that I was going to put together, but the powerful HRV did it for me, but I have a slight modification on the next slide. So first of all, you can see Bitcoin and cold storage, uh, the advantage for all of them, they all have the same advantage. Cash flow generating, only MicroStrategy has that. They have a software business that generates cash that they can buy Bitcoin with. Also risk from Bitcoin price volatility, uh, good and good for the ETFs. In fact, cold storage is, you could argue, better because you can flip it out in minutes if you need to. But the ETF does have huge price fluctuations. I'd maybe make this an orange. And MicroStrategy, extreme price, price fluctuations and has done since 2020. Um, commissions and fees, very good for owning your own Bitcoin. Uh, none for MicroStrategy. And of course, bad for the ETF. Counterparty risk, you could argue, your own custody is good. You just have to trust yourself, but you also can lose your own stuff as well. Be, be aware of that. Uh, MicroStrategy, bad, and Bitcoin ETF, bad. Transferable, good. Hard to transfer, impossible to transfer Bitcoin out of an ETF or a Bitcoin out of MicroStrategy. Liquidity is very good. You can just buy your own Bitcoin anywhere you want, hundreds of places. Uh, MicroStrategy, um, liquidity, it depends on the day. And we saw with the face of selling pressure this week and what that does to the stock price. It oversells it. 
Also, Bitcoin ETF, we talked about the delay in actual them buying Bitcoin, so not too good. Scarcity, uh, it's very good to own yours, but MicroStrategy will always have shares available, depends on the price, and the Bitcoin ETF will also have shares available. And marginable, I'd say bad here for Bitcoin and cold storage, you can't margin it. Technically, you can buy MicroStrategy and margin, and you can buy the Bitcoin ETF. So you can see here, depending on who you are, this is a mixed bag, but for me... I like the fact that things are optionable. My, you know, Bitcoin is optionable, but the premium on the call options and put options is very horrible. So it makes it very difficult. MicroStrategy is perfect for this. And there is no options on Bitcoin ETFs just yet. And even if there are, I don't know how good they will be as well because of what we discussed earlier regarding price lag. So from that perspective, the need for MicroStrategy is not going away. Now... Next question. This is related to what is the faster horse? Is it Bitcoin or Tesla? And we're going into a very special time, everybody. And um, before I even jump into this, we are living now in the middle of the AI revolution. It may have not hit you in the face yet, but it will real soon. And we have S curves colliding, and we are going through a whole bunch of paradigm shifts, both in traditional finance, fueled by crypto, and also. AI, robotics, energy storage, that type of stuff. So this question from Pedro is, bags packed, but feel that Bitcoin may grow faster than Tesla short term. Do you think it's wise to swap it and take advantage of the ETF and having? Absolutely. Um, the thing is, for me, I would incur taxes if I do that. So I'm not going to, and I kind of pack my bags for the long-term horizon. But and I got into my positions heavy in 2023. But this is a cool chart you should all be aware of. One, it's Bitcoin divided by Tesla. Basically, the way to interpret this is think of the number of Tesla shares it costs per Bitcoin. So if you want to be a whole coiner in Bitcoin, that would have cost you like 67, 66 shares back in October 2022. Crazy. Both were weak, but one was weaker than the other. And today, it costs about 195 Tesla shares for one whole Bitcoin. But the way to interpret this chart is, where are we going next? And this is the ATR model that we have. It tells you kind of when things are peaky, i.e. red flags, when to sell, and when to buy good opportunities. And it's right on the two-day time frame, 100% of the time. So it works really well. But if you just, I, the reason I like this model is it helps give you a picture of where we're going. And if you look to the left, you'll see what happened back in 2021. And that was a big move for both assets, but more so Bitcoin. Now, where will Tesla versus Bitcoin go? I'm not sure, but I do believe, yes, you're probably right. Bitcoin will outperform because of the halving, because of the ETFs and everything else. Forget this short-term noise but there definitely are a lot more tailwinds right now for uh bitcoin over tesla but that being said and a shout out to hey dave hey dave seven he put this beautiful chart together and i love it it's probably my favorite chart of all time and he talks about how four s curves are colliding all going into explosive growth all early but all happening very fast evs fsd robo taxi energy storage and AI robotics. And Tesla is making huge investments in all of these. And all of these feed off each other. And that, at some stage, I don't know when, but it's going to cause an explosion upwards in stock price. In addition, as I posted this on Patreon this morning, uh, this is Tesla and how it's all retail. You can see all the other stocks, you know, Meta, for example, it's 83% uh, institutional investors, Google, 81%, Microsoft, pretty much 80%. Uh, Apple is about 63, 65%. But Tesla is in the toilet at around 50%. So it is all, all, all retail investors in this space for Tesla. Now, there will come a day, despite the institution's aversion to Elon Musk, they will be compelled to invest in AI to stay relevant. And the number one AI stock on the planet, I maintain, is Tesla. And when that time arrives, Tesla will surge and us retail investors will be overjoyed. And I can assure you this day is coming, although the exact timing remains uncertain. 
It's kind of like me stacking as much as I possibly could buy when Solana fell under 10 and then stacking all year under 20. I knew it was going to pop. I didn't know when, but I knew it was going to pop. I know this is going to pop. I don't know when, but I'm packing my bags to make sure when the day comes, I'll be ready. And timing, timing these moves is very difficult because we know with anything else, things can move very fast. You can see an asset going from 20 bucks to 80 to hundred dollars in weeks, literally. And it's hard to mobilize uh, for those types of movements. And also we have other stuff happening too regarding Tesla. The FSD version 12 is a step change. This will revolutionize so much. And I've been a beta user with FSD for the longest time. FSD 12, all I hear, all I learn, how it learns, how good it is, is game changing. It's apparently four times better than the average driver. Think about that. And it's getting better every single day. When this comes, and this is going to come this year in 2024, that's going to change things. But you know what's going to change things even more? Is this thing. And this is why we pack our bags. This bot is very real. And it will be bigger than FSD. <laughs> and it's all happening at the same time. So it is when you break all this down and you go back to Dave's four S curves colliding, you can make the picture in your head, the mental exponential leap that is required, the paradigm shift, the step change, whatever you want to call it. It's happening. We just don't know when it's going to be reflected in the stock price. And normally, the stock price should reflect where the asset's going to be. But the problem is your average human can't comprehend this because they've never seen it before. And that's the miracle of Tesla. And that's why I do what I do here for you. So <laughs> let's just jump on to the next question. So another question regarding miners. So uh, this is from Casponian. Will the Bitcoin miners be strongly hurt by ETF approval? E.g. do you see Marathon and Mawson going down? So they've always been proxies. The uh, ETFs is different. But what ETFs will do is increase the demand for Bitcoin. And you know what miners do? They make Bitcoin. Okay, so, uh, and I know one miner for a fact is setting up an OTC desk, which means they will legally be permitted to pass their freshly minted Bitcoin directly to an ETF like BlackRock. All right, there'll be no Coinbase in the middle. They'll just be strictly, you know, you have your mining facility in Atlanta, Georgia, or somewhere in Texas or whatever, or in South America, and they'll be able to kick the Bitcoin directly, directly to the ETF. That's huge. Now, back to your questions, Marathon and Mawson. You can see here, that, again, this is the ATR chart, which gives you a very simple visual as to where support and resistance levels are for this asset. Currently, uh, it's at about 19 bucks, I think, Marathon. Now we have two levels. Level three is 15 bucks and level two is $12. Trend is still down, but I think they're very close to bottoming. And that bottom could be around that worst case, $15 level. I don't see us going back down to uh, where we were a few weeks ago, uh, around $12. So I think Marathon is very close to bottoming here. Maybe it's already has bottomed. Worst case, 15 bucks. And then it was at 32 a couple of weeks ago. Could it go back there? Absolutely. They got hammered. And people are upset. It's like, oh my God, my miner is down. I lost so much. Remember how much we made last year? Okay, so just look at this chart. It gives you that zoom out perspective of the layers of where we come, come, come from in a very short window of time. So that's Marathon. Next one is Mawson. Again, on the ATR. Oh, by the way, the Marathon one is correct 82.36% of the time. And this one is correct. I can't really read it, but 85.71%, I think. But here, the two levels that are critical are level two, 2.39, and level one, a buck 48. I think maybe two bucks, 40 cents could be the floor from Mawson. Or next week, we could see a big rally in Bitcoin. And then everybody be over the fact, okay, the ETFs are here. And then proxies will become popular again. But remember also, many of the miners are issuing stock right now to buy as many new rigs as they can to grow hash as much as they can. And uh, watch for a post later on Patreon as well regarding exactly this. I got some very good news for you that also supports why I, my biggest bag is a certain name. Anyway, next one is from Mellow Bag. Speaking of bags, that just popped up. Why don't you ever discuss Bitwise? 
as you do Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Is the Bitwise product an inferior proxy? And it seems to have a deeper discount than GBTC right now, which I imagine is a positive, since once the Bitcoin ETF launches, the discount will vanish and Bitwise holders will capture the value. And lastly, if I bought Bitwise within the last 12 months, in or out of a retirement, how should I approach swapping it for an ETF? So this is a tough question. And I'm just going to answer it in numbers and data. And I don't want to offend anybody at Bitwise or any Bitwise holders, but there's certain reasons I don't like certain things. And I also, I can't say exactly, I'm very enamored with Grayscale and their fees and how they come up with these crappy mixed bag funds. They're just stupid. And then they swap out half decent assets for crappy assets. It just infuriates me because you know there's a boiler room transaction happening behind the scenes, which I don't like. So let's look at some numbers here. Number one, I do not like the holdings in this Bitwise fund. Uh, there's only a couple I would potentially own. In fact, there's three of them. The rest I would not touch. Uh, so that's the first part. Second, I don't like the expense ratios, 2.5%, which is very high. But Grayscale is the same. And yes, it does have a discount. But when you, when you look at the performance of this fund over time, it is not good. And I actually, one of my very first videos back in 2021, I've only been doing this for three years, was about Bitwise and why I recommended not buying the Bitwise fund. Because I broke it down and I did my numbers and I said, you're not going to be able to make money on this thing. If you look at the actual performance of this fund since it launched, it's down 28.7%. Hmm. Bitcoin's up 138.1%. What's wrong with that picture? You see what I mean? This is why I don't like the stuff. It's better, better to have the pure form. And yes, it does have a discount, but because it's a mixed bag of a whole bunch of crap, there will be no spotty ETF approved. That's a mixed bag. And people will continue to get out of this and get into pure form because probably like me, they don't like the holdings in this bag. Remember, you want... The best assets be in the top 1% of assets. Don't dabble in other stuff. So the discount may not vanish because it's a mixed bag, because it's not a pure spot ETF. And to swap, just sell it. There's no secret way. Find a good time. Find it on a pump. Find it on a low discount. And then get out. And remember always, as I said before a few times already, pure form always when possible. Mixing up with this, imagine imagine you buy into this thing. I should have popped up the chart, but you buy it at the beginning and you watch everything else go up. Just remind you of these numbers. <laughs> I just saw the Bitcoin price, 42420, unbelievable. Anyway, this, uh, imagine you, you your friends are owning Bitcoin and they're up 138.1% and you're owning this Bitwise thing and you're down 28.7%. How would you feel down the pub explaining that one? So that's why I don't talk about Bitwise. Next in the box, Sean20. Um, you mentioned that airdrops aren't safe. I've read about Jupiter airdrop. Should I stay away from this one and just purchase Jupiter right once it becomes available? And if yes, where will it be available for purchase? From Sean20. So first of all, must be a slight misunderstanding there. I said, beware of airdrops. Not all airdrops are safe. So let's break this down and go through some stuff because this will be an exciting one. And I think this will be a game changer for probably definitely one of the biggest releases of 2024. And uh, first of all, you're right to be cautious about airdrops because uh, they can sometimes be used to scam unsuspecting users and not all airdrops are created equal. And it's important to do your due diligence as well. And in the case of Jupiter, uh, this one is very special, but remember, be careful. Do your due diligence before participating in one and beware, 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 beware. Your hot wallet, think of like a, a direct sucking pipe to your bank account. You connect that to something that's nefarious. It will drain your bank account in the flash of a second. Boom, gone. Lifetime to make it, second to lose it. Be very, 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 very careful what you connect your wallet or hot wallet to, okay? And always, always have many of them and have small amounts in each, just in case you do screw up and lose everything. 
don't have all your eggs in one basket. That's why it's so important to be aware of this. And thank you for the question. But there's more. The Jupiter airdrop is definitely legitimate. Project is unbelievable. I use it every single day. I used it an awful lot this morning. Uh, the Jupiter project is a decentralized ecosystem and has a suite of DeFi tools and services that are unbelievable. In there, you can swap anything. You can do perpetual longs. You can do limit orders. You can uh, commit liquidity and earn like 106% yield. You can do pretty much, this is what I've been, and options, I mentioned perpetual longs with leverage. It's basically the one-stop shop I've been looking for for four years in crypto. Now we have it, and that's why I think it's special. Yes, there are others, but nothing that I have found that works as well as this. But uh, the Jupiter token as well, I forgot to mention, is the native token, and it uh, can be used for many different purposes. So yeah, uh, I do believe this will be very good. Now, if you have used Jupiter in the past, you might be able to get the airdrop. So you can test this very quickly by, again... <laughs> You, unfortunately, you have to connect your wallet to find out where you are. There's other ways of doing it too, a little more complex, where you can just do your wallet address. But you can see if you have done transactions on Jupiter in the past, you will automatically get the airdrop, which is awesome. So this is from one of my wallets. It's about 3,200 uh, tokens from like literally one swap and one wallet. And there you go. So free money, but you have to have used it. And they have subsequent ones coming. And don't worry if you're not there, but you can check your allocations by going to this site only, uh, HTTPS, you got to write it exactly, colon forward slash forward slash airdrop dot jupe dot ag. Connect your wallet. And here uh, I connected another wallet and said, sorry, you're not in our first batch of cadets. They spelled cadets wrong. That's weird. That should be a red flag when you see a website that has a cadet wrong. Anyway, it's a legitimate one. But, oh, no, it's not actually. I get it. There's a cat and it said cat debts, not cadets. Okay, my bad. <laughs> not a spelling mistake. It's play on words. Uh, but there are still three more rounds to go and we'll release even more news on that soon. So again, it's not too late, but this will be an exciting token. And when you see how this thing runs... It, and then you see how a Bitcoin ETF runs. Literally, you'd swear we are 100 years apart. Madness. Anyway, next question is from Lesson Learned 58. Can you become wealthy on trading spot or do you really need to learn to trade options? No, you don't. In fact, uh, a team member, I jumped into their account. I placed two or three trades in the space of a couple of weeks and I turned $300,000 into $880,000 again, just a few weeks ago. So absolutely not. Uh, you do have to take a lot of risk doing this, but I was confident and um, timing was okay. There was an ARB opportunity and kind of that's what happened. But we'll see, this This is all. So you, you, what we also do like with this spot is you, if you make money fast, take your winnings off the table, keep the initial amount you have, or to keep whatever you have after you take your winnings off the table and park them somewhere safe. So what I did in this team member's account, I made the gains and then put them into Tesla. Made the gains, put them into Tesla. Because uh, I don't want to blow up her account, but I want her to have a special bag that's ready, you know, five years from now, it'll be something very significant. So yes, you can make money on spot very easily. Timing is everything. And if you were in Patreon this morning, you'd see how... Uh, certain things can be done too. Next question is from Toshi. Three legged stool question. Two out of three complete. I'm a 36 year old with Bitcoin, MicroStrategy, Solana, and Tesla. Retirement bag targets hit. Wow. But no castle. I plan to take profit over the cycle and aim for a 20 to 30% castle deposit and purchase in November 2025 to January 2026. Then rebuild retirement bags. Would you do something different? So, first of all, massively impressed you, you you're so young you've hit all our retirement targets for all of those assets which means you are set you just have to wait five years before you're completely set so i'm very proud so i love your plan <coughs> um but it's important that while you're doing everything right okay you've executed your bags you're thinking long term um but there's another thing that I don't know if you did it mistakenly or intentionally, 
but buying a property between November and January is the best time to buy. So you must be listening to literally everything I say. So very, very impressed. The only issue though, we may top out before your purchase plan. So watch for that. We don't know where this bull run is going to go. We don't know what the timing will be like, but, uh, what you can do as well, imagine we have a situation where we top out in April 2025, maybe earlier, maybe January 2025. Um, you could also take profits there and park them in an asset that's about to pop as well. So that's very, very important. And I've got to roll into the next question, which ties back to this question too, on and the previous question as well. Can you make money trading spot? You can also make money on leverage on real estate. Um, but first of all, I just so, so impressed, Toji, with the way you've executed your plan and the way you're thinking long term at only 36 years of age. But this next question ties in and I want to show you how important it is, why it's so important to have a castle. Uh, so this is like second part of answer to your question from Jupe24. We have a Jupiter in the house. If self-sovereignty is king, can you play devil's advocate and make the case for paying off your mortgage with the IRS becoming more aggressive and U.S. desperately broke? Asset seizure is a small yet non-zero risk and a home is a vulnerable asset until protected via a trust or some other vehicle. What questions would you ask an attorney or CPA and what metrics would you use to guide your decision? So this is, again, you probably need an accountant or an attorney to be able to answer this one. So it's tricky. But what I do want to share is a couple of things and why I believe debt is important and leverage can be very helpful, even though sometimes it can be very dangerous as well. So first of all, these are the negatives of paying off a mortgage. Uh, fiat is debasing. As I say, they keep money printing. There'll be a lot of money printing in 2024 all around the world. Um, if you have, say, a mortgage at 2.5% for 10 years interest only, it's a gift. And you can could have got a lot of those uh, a couple of years back. And for those of you, as many people in the community, that locked in 10-year interest-only fixed-rate mortgages, and now they're sitting pretty as mortgages are 7%, 7.5%. And uh, now they have flexibility to leave if they want. <laughs> and they're not there. Or well, they're kind of tied into a low mortgage, so they can't actually leave. But it's still a good thing, low cost. Also, you get tax write-offs. Uh, mortgage interest reduction in the United States. I know the law varies in different countries around the world. I'm thinking UK, you can't. Um, Germany, I'm not sure. But anyway, but the key thing here is you have cash to invest in other assets. And this is often overlooked. So imagine, imagine you're me and you take out a million dollar mortgage and you pay two and a half percent interest on it only for 10 years. No, no principal repayment and fiat is debasing by 14%. So basically, at the end of 10 years, I'm paying back 400000 not a million bucks, in real dollar terms. But the other thing is, I have a million bucks that I can pump in the market and make a lot more money on. I can turn that million into multiple millions of dollars. And at the same time, get tax write-offs to my mortgage interest. It's just, it's, I used to call this, and this might be an offensive term, but I refer to this as middle-class welfare, to be able to borrow against a hard asset that, yeah, maybe it's a non-zero risk in the future of CBDCs and everything, and that somebody will take your property from you if you don't abide by certain rules, but we're not sure. But that is the secret thing. Having, if you have all your cash locked up in real estate, you have an opportunity cost of that, which is substantial. Like, for example, would you want a million dollars locked up in a house cash over the next 10 years, or would you want to spend that million dollars today on Tesla and wait 10 years? Or Bitcoin? That's key. And also, make sure you don't blow up your mortgage. Make sure you can always afford to make the payments and never lose your castle through foreclosure. That is a huge risk. You need that, what I call a safety blanket, safety mattress, safety cushion, airbag, parachute, emergency fund, whatever you want to call it. You got to make sure you have that too. But there's more. Let's talk about the mortgage example. And this goes back to Toshi as well about the castle and the advantage of a castle. And it may not be as sexy as 
playing with crypto or something, but still it can be quite powerful. Imagine you buy a property for $300,000. Your down payment is 10%, 30 grand down. Your mortgage amount is 270K. Your mortgage term is 30 years. Your property appreciates at a nominal 5% per year. There's many markets in the US that are a lot higher than that. And your interest rate's 2.5% fixed for 30 years. Again, hypothetical, but it was achievable only a couple of years ago. World is a little bit different now, but it'll, it'll get back to a ZERP environment. It has to because, or else the US government and other governments around the world, the deficit's going to explode. But just breaking down that example to show you how powerful having a castle is, you have a $300,000 house appreciating at 5% per year, 10% down. Your $30,000 investment becomes $1.23 million over 30 years. And that's an annual return on investment of 7.7%. And that's before a tax write-off. When you add in the amount you can write off for taxes, you make even more money. So this is why, this is why that three-legged stool is so important. And this is why everybody needs to get one because it's safe, it's a tax write-off, and it goes up in value over time. And your leverage too. And um, now this is the tricky part. And again, I'm not an attorney, but I will point out some things that would appear to me as one. The current tax law treatment of mortgage interest reductions could change. If it does, that changes the whole calculus of owning real estate. Also, uh, paying off uh, a mortgage impacts your tax situation as well. You may have to pay more taxes if you use all your cash to pay off your house. Also, uh, there is a low risk of transferring a home to a trust or other asset protection vehicle. But even if you do that, it doesn't mean it's necessarily protected. Now, the final question is, I'm always a little bit paranoid, but what we do not know is what the new world order will look like, central bank digital currencies, or while in control, rule enforcement, penalties for not abiding certain rules, they could, uh, seeing what's happening in other parts of the world where it's happened before, you don't know where it could happen. So I like the way you think. You do not have a tinfoil hat on. Everything is possible and we need to prepare for it. That's why Bitcoin is schmuck insurance. In case everything goes to hell, <laughs> you'll always have that. So, uh, favorite part of the week as well. Thank you for all the great questions. A big, big, big one. It took days to prepare. But thank you all. And a community member wanted to know if we could help donate to help the wolves. So we picked this amazing, amazing agency that helps protect Yellowstone ecosystem, which includes animals like wolves, grizzly bears, moose, bison, and more. And also, I can't remember the exact square much but it's a massive like it's the size of a country this place <coughs> yellowstone national park and uh, big thank you for the inspiration the idea and tomorrow we have dca live on cto's channel 7 30 a.m my time pacific us and 4 30 central european time and early morning in australia so thank you all for coming and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you like this uh, a lot of work <laughs> goes into these things as you can imagine but I hope everybody got something away from it. And the 5,000 people watching live, thank you all for coming. So let's go to some live questions. <clears throat> I better drink some tea while I try to get my voice back. So, mm. Thank you as well to the mods in the chat for helping. Kiwi Robin, ah, Kiwi and your partner watching live, I hope. Thank you so much. And yes, love working hard for you and good chatting with you earlier today. Uh, one Brightham, uh, with so many expecting Bitcoin to go to 38k, what do you expect in the short term? I mean, we hit 40, 41,600 on Friday. Beautiful sniping opportunity. Could it go to 38k? Absolutely. As I clearly said, there's some type of weird manipulation happening behind the scenes with this OTC stuff and Coinbase. I can't put my finger on it, but it's funky. There cannot be in two days such an inflow of capital and the price to go down. Either short-term holders are being shuck out or something funky is happening behind the scenes. It's just mathematics. Who knows? But either way, over time, it will go up. So, you know, if you don't have any Bitcoin and you're waiting for 38,000, I think that would be a dangerous strategy. Uh, if you see it at 41.6, 41.8, get it. Get some, as they say. Sir Winston, thank you so much for coming. NFA, DCA miners, or just hold? Uh, miners will go up. Um, miners make Bitcoin. Miners are critical to security. And the Bitcoin price is going to go up. Bitcoin fees are going through the roof. Miners will go up as well. 
but the best ones, those that can grow their hash, those that operate a high level of effectiveness and efficiency will do very well, I do believe. So yeah, you know, I bought, I think I bought, I can't remember which one I bought on Friday. Oh yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I bought more. So, you know, I that's just my strategy. When you see, uh, when you see an asset, it goes from two dollars to fifteen dollars nearly, and then falls down to eight. You know, it's going back to fifteen. So it's it's a no brainer. And size so going a lot more than that too. And that all happened in a couple of weeks. So it's it's bizarre. Just wondering, do you have an explicit reason why not to use a central exchange wallet? on an aggregator or DEX like Jupyter. Um, I see that it does have functionality, but I wanted to know your thoughts. Uh, I, I would only use something like Phantom on Jupyter. Nothing else I trust, nothing else. So when, you, when you're trading with these tools, you need stuff to literally move at the speed of light. You, you, you kick up one sol from Coinbase to Phantom Wallet, it takes literally one or two seconds if that and then when you make a trade you can see if you're using a trade on jupiter you can see exactly is it filled instantaneously and then almost instantly after it's filled you'll see whatever you bought or swapped into is on your wallet i doubt central ex centralized exchange wallets can move like that and i didn't even know they were integrated but i don't also don't have one so <laughs> that's that but I'll, I'll check into it from just wondering ron b i have a big position in micro strategy has been dropped a lot i'm concerned people are selling this in buying the etf i'm still up in the position am i better off selling and pay the taxes and putting it into an etf i think right now um we're not sure exactly if sailor's done selling or if he has more to sell um and the market is kind of weak right now. And of course, proxies aren't delight, but it'll come back. Uh, you know, I have, I too have a big position in MicroStrategy. I'm not selling because I don't want to take the tax hit. I'm up very big on it. Um, so I'm holding. Um, will it return? Yes. As per the reasons I showcased. Let me pop them up again, make sure people are familiar with this. I like to trade and control my position. And... Uh, MicroStrategy allows me to do that with a lot of flexibility, and that's why I like it. I wouldn't be able to do what I do with an ETF or with spot Bitcoin or with options trading on Bitcoin on Deribit and other players, and I've tried them, and they just I just can't get the fills that I need, but I can on MicroStrategy. So we'll see. Um, could an ETF outperform MicroStrategy? I doubt it, not with fees. Um, but think about MicroStrategy is when to time your buys and sells and play the volatility, which is the most exciting thing about that asset. Um, also, I've noticed a lot of people starting to talk about MicroStrategy, about how cheap it is. And remember, they own nearly 190,000 Bitcoin. So you can just calculate the value of the business by taking the Bitcoin price, multiply it by that. And if Bitcoin goes back to 49,000, which it will, um, <laughs> you'll see MicroStrategy go up. So, you know, a lot of people were shocked but remember, MicroStrategy was at 160, and it went to 740 in a very short window of time. And it's still far outperformed Bitcoin. So that's the way you need to think about it. Will it continue? I think so, because of the nature of how stock markets work. Uh, Jay say, uh, my Sol Alt bag is looking nice. Can you do the retire on? Oh, the, so uh, I'm doing an experimental Solana altcoin position. But this stuff is very risky and we don't have all the information we need. I don't ever do a retire on on things that are super, super stable. And also this whole space is changing so fast. So I'll give you an example. Imagine you had a world-class DEX on Solana two years ago. Today, you've got brand new technology that's superior. So the chain itself and the dApps on the chain are evolving so fast, they're making excellent dApps almost redundant. And that's the crazy thing about uh, how fast this whole space works. And this is all things crypto. This is all things technology. Everything is moving and developing so fast. So beware of old tech. Um, but Jay say, I will be doing something on this uh, Sol Alt stuff. Uh, stay tuned for that. Can't say what it is just yet. Um, 
Texas Rex, uh, any thoughts on Solend versus Marginfy? I prefer Solend myself. I find it very easy to use. It reminds me of what Ave was back in the day, and uh, it's pretty slick. So, yeah, and it's very well structured as well. Um, Sigdiv, uh, can you put together a fear and greed index for the community? Building up to the ETF, everyone was excited. Then when the price did not go to $1 million in a week, uh, everybody questions what? Maybe greed? This is this is so brilliant a uh, question, and I love it because I felt like I spent the week holding hands. People were, like, it went from absolute jubilation when on Thursday Bitcoin shot to 49000 and then it started falling, 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 falling. And then people started learning more about exactly what's happening behind the scenes, and then people started freaking out. People started losing faith in everything. Uh, but, you know, it, it, <laughs> that would be so good. And people were so crushed because Bitcoin went down, the miners went down, MicroStrategy went down. Uh, <laughs> it was just, it was just a, a rough week. But that, that's always kind of part and parcel. But you, sometimes you got to look beyond the rough week and keep your eye on the prize. But yeah, fear is the combination of fear and greed is such a perfect analogy for what was last week <clears throat> then the range of emotions is crazy but uh, thank god we can still we still have other things too it's not just all bitcoin but we play with other assets too which are a lot of fun um and a big thank you as well uh to the mods in the chat and everybody here in the community and thanks to the super sticker from daryl anderson texas t-rex Hudson the Dog, Jeff Hammer, Jimmy Neal, Inspector to You, MT, Sigma 103, Silicon Valley Stoic, hi there, uh, Quaken 357, DeFi Logic, Adam Q, Metageist, Alex Rogan, G60 Johnny, Dushi Mahesh, Crypt, a bottle of red, and long term holder. Thank you all for coming, everybody. Hope you enjoy the show. Hang tough. Again, Bitcoin is scarce. It's hard. It can only go up. Just We just got to flush out all this manipulation, flush out the bad actors. Most of them are gone. Got rid of some of the players and everything will settle down real soon. And remember, the most important thing you have to understand is you've got all these investment advisors. I covered how many. There are 3.7 million of them on the planet. They are now being instructed, make sure your client has like a 1% to 3% allocation. If that happens... We are going to the moon. There's, there's no, it's mathematically impossible for it to do anything else because it's scarce. So just keep your seatbelts on, enjoy the ride. It's going to be fun. And thank you all for coming. Bye bye.